Welcome to our latest demo series, Network Change Reviews with Fatfish Enterprise. Fatfish Enterprise allows you to predict the impact of your change before you deploy it to production. This demo is going to focus on a manual change workflow, but Batfish Enterprise can be used in both automated and manual change workflows. Now, my network is a typical data center. I have Juniper MX as a design border, I have a redundant Juniper firewall, SRX firewall, and I've got Arista switches as my leaf spine. Now, I need to make a pretty routine change to the network. I need to add a new subnet to one of my leaf routers in the fabric. I have a standard mop for this that lays out the configuration commands for the change and the show commands to run to check network state after the change. But before I get to the maintenance window, I'm going to test this change in Batfish Enterprise. For that, I'm going to use the change review workflow. I'm going to start out by creating a new change review. Now, the change request says I need to add a new subnet to leaf89, and the IPAM has given me the subnet 10.250.89.0 slash 24. So let me just update the title. Add subnet 10.250.89.0 slash 24 to leaf89. Great. So now I can always distinguish this. And now I'm going to just find leaf89 in my list of devices and look at its config. You can see this is the current running config on leaf89. And now I'm going to go to my mop, and that's going to tell me the list of commands I should enter to make this change. In our design, we always attach the IP subnet to a VLAN interface. For this change, I'm going to use VLAN 389. So let's create that VLAN. I'm going to give it the first IP address in that subnet that I'm using. And now I need to find the next available interface to allocate to VLAN 389, which in this case is Ethernet 7. And I'm going to put it in access mode and then give it VLAN. And the last step is making sure updating the BGP config so that this prefix is advertised. Done. That's exactly what my mop tells me to do. Fix this typo. And now I can tell Batfish to update its network models based on this change. And while Batfish is doing that, I can set up my tests for this change. My mop says that I should check that the route is present in all fabric routers, including the firewalls, and that there's a slash 16 aggregate representing that subnet on the border routers. So in Batfish Enterprise, I can do that by adding a validation step called devices have routes. I'm going to give it a title, that new subnet 10.250.89.0.24 is present on all fabric routers. Firewall. Now, I also need to tell Batfish what do I expect to happen for this check in production, so before the change is made, where I expect it to fail since this subnet is not present, and what I expect to happen after the change, where I expect it to pass because the config changes I've just made should advertise this uh, subnet to all the devices in the fabric. Now, I give it the list of devices to check against, so all my fabric devices, so my leaf. Spine, border leaf, and firewall. And then everything is just in the global table, the default verb. Now the prefix I care about. There we go. So now I can run this validation step, this check. And that is telling me, yep, before the change, as I expected, this check should fail, meaning this subnet is not present on any of these fabric routers at the firewall. And after the change, it should pass because everybody has this new subnet. And I can see if I look at you know, leaf 01, I see ECMP because there's four entries for it. It's coming from each of the spines. Perfect. Now I just need to check for the aggregate on the border. I'm going to use this clone shortcut to clone this earlier test. Make sure the new, check that new, check that aggregate, new subnet present on border routers. I'm going to update this to be border.star. I'm going to change this prefix to be the slash 16 that covers that. Same expectation, it should fail in production, in the current production configs, and it should pass after the change is made. I run that. 
No good. This test fails. The border routers don't have the slash 16. So now let's deep dig into this a little bit and see how we can fix that. So I know that the firewall is responsible for advertising the aggregate to the border. So let's look at the firewall config. Let's look at my routing policy for the borders. It's called export border. Export border. It's looking, it's advertising prefixes that fall under this fabric aggregate prefix list. Let's see what that definition is. Okay, so I can see the subnet that was allocated is not covered by the existing aggregates. So let's uh, add this to that prefix list. Policy options. 250.80.0.16. And that's just the prefix list, but I also know I need to generate an aggregate. So I'm guessing it's also not there. So let's add that as well. So set routing options, aggregate. I'm going to update that change review. Now Batfish is going to take these firewall changes and uh, add them to the changes I made to Leap 89 and rebuild all of its network models. And I can, I'm going to use the same test cases I had before. I'm just going to schedule them to run. So as soon as the snapshot is updated, I can get my validation results and then see if there's anything else I need to do. Great, all of the tests I created for this change now pass. If I were deploying this change in the maintenance window, this would probably be the extent of my post-deployment checks. But with Batfish Enterprise, I can also check the status of any predefined network policies to make sure that the change doesn't violate them. And I can also compare other network attributes that are different before and after the change. So I look at my policies, I've defined nine policies, all of them are still passing, so I'm good to go there. And if I was to look at my network comparison, I can see there's a number of changes, specifically look at my routing tables. I see there's 101 devices that have route changes. And if I was to click on one of them, let's pick on you know, spline 01, for instance, I can see it's got one prefix that's been added from leaf 89, uh, as I'd expect. Now, after having run specific tests, check that none of the existing network policies were violated and reviewing the comparison between the change and production configurations, I am confident that this change is safe and ready to deploy. So my final step, is to update the ServiceNow ticket uh, with all of this information so I can have this change approved and scheduled for deployment. And to do that, I can just append this URL to the ServiceNow ticket, or I can export all of this as a PDF and attach that to my ServiceNow ticket. As you can see, in less than 10 minutes, and without having to spin up 100 node data center network in GNS3, and then build a series of tests that require collecting and parsing show command information from all of the routers in that lab, I was able to design, test, and debug my change and collect all the necessary data to prove that the change is safe and ready to be deployed. That is the power of Batfish Enterprise. Keep in mind, everything I showed you in this video can also be automated, and that's going to be the topic for one of our next demo videos, how to automate firewall changes with Batfish Enterprise. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at info.intention.com or through our website, www.intentionet.com. Thanks.